two, one, let's run it. What is up and welcome back to the Daily Traders Podcast. Today we're here at the FX Summit. I'm your host, Mark. This is my co-host, Jack. And today, our very special guest, Q Banks. Q is a full-time trader, car enthusiast, and entrepreneur. Q, it's good to have you on the podcast. I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. So tell us a bit about your come-up story for anyone who doesn't know you. Uh, how did you get started? So I started back, like, I first got introduced to the, the market itself back, back when I was 20 years old. I'm, I'm 32 now. Um, and that's when I was doing... Um, stock options first. So like I kind of dabbled in stock, stock options for like about a couple months, made a little bit of money, but n nothing too, too, too crazy to the point that it changed my entire life. And then um, I got reintroduced back to the markets at 24. Okay. So that's when, um, you know, on Facebook at the time, people were starting to trade heavy and that kind of stuff. So like, that's when I, I was like, you know, you know what, like, let me just give it another try. And after that, I think that's when I started to like dabble more into like the entire field and the, the entire niche of trading. And then after that, I just went full fledged with the entire thing, you know? Nice. Yeah. So let's go back a little further because you you came over from Jamaica. Yes, when I'm bo you, when you born in out? Jamaica, um, and I, I've been here since I, I was like around nine years old. Okay. Yeah. So then, what happened? You went to high school. You got out. No. So um, yeah, like I went to middle school in, in high school here, and then um after that, like when everybody was graduating, they're talking about going going to college and that kind of stuff. But remember, yeah. like I had no kind of documents. I just got my citizenship about like five years ago. So wow. I couldn't go to school yet. I couldn't even, even get a job yet. Really? So technically, I had like no choice but to figure out a, a different kind of way on how to actually make money. Yeah. So um, that's when um, and, you know, I started coming across things like make money online. I came across the stock options. I, I came across um, things dealing with like unlocking and jailbreaking iPhones at a time. So I was doing everything else except getting a job because I couldn't get a job. Yeah. So that's when um, I started taking the, the concept of make money online a bit more seriously and then going full-fledged with that concept. Yeah, so you said you worked at, last night we had a conversation, you said you worked at Target for a little bit. Yeah, so I worked at Target, um, I, was, I was a seasonal worker in electronics for um, the season of 2014 through 2015, like w the winter time. And yeah. then I was so good because I feel like I take pride in every single thing that I do, no, no matter what it is. Yeah. So I, I, I was a seasonal worker and then I pretty much got chosen to actually stay at the job. And yeah, like I was, I was at Target for like about 10 months. Okay. And I, I really embraced it because at the same time, like, it's not like it was a terrible job but at the end of the day, but it, it couldn't take me where I needed to go. Yeah. So I had fun people there. People were great. The managers were great. Everybody was cool. But at the end of the day, like, it couldn't really take me to, like, buy the, th the things that I, I want to get, travel like how I wanted to travel, like, make the kind of money that I wanted to make. So mm -hmm. that's when I um, left after, like, 10 months and did a yeah. full-time training at that point. I went so, full-fledged. So All right. So you come over from Jamaica, and I imagine you didn't have any wealthy people. Pair, like, I don't know what you're, I don't want to assume anything. But. No, like, my, my dad is very, very well off. But yeah. at the end of the day, I have 31 siblings. Yeah. So oh it doesn't God. really stretch. You have 31 wow. siblings. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Really? That's a, yeah. That's, that's great. 18 brothers. I have a couple brothers here, like, right now also. So at the end of the day, like, it's, the, the, the money doesn't stretch mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. You yeah. know, so, like, in America, we were living pretty much, like, lower middle class and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, we still have money to buy clothes for, for, for school or Christmas gifts and, and that kind of stuff, but it was nothing to the point that like somebody was gonna buy me like my first car. Yeah. I had to buy my, my first car. I had to pretty much pay for my own braces yeah. at the time. So like there, there wasn't extra money to pretty much give to me like how I wanted to do regardless of his yeah. position at the time. Like my dad was, was great, he's a, he's a businessman, but at the end of the day, like it was to the point we have a lot of siblings, so we were just good, like yeah. just good. So what I was getting at is like, you didn't really have anyone to kind of like like that was very present in your life. This, you know, the, the idea of like being super successful and like really making your own and like buying your own Lambo. It was kind of no, because um, I mean, coming from Jamaica, like Lambo is just a dream. Yeah, it's just yeah. a dream. Like you're it, you're in a place that pretty much those cars are not really a thing. You mm -hmm. know, it's it's super expensive that kind of stuff. So like when I came to America, I feel like just being around more people that pretty much have those kind of possessions, but also those kind of resources to actually get me to where I want to be, and trying to find those certain people that I could actually be around to then you know, just try to feed off of them a tad bit, you know? Yeah. So that's where I pretty much just took full advantage of, of being around those people that pretty much have those possessions or being around people that, that just knows more than where I currently was at the time. Yeah. So what gave you the motivation to enter your first trade? Bro, so I, I, have, a, I have a thing, right? The same amount of money that I lost, I could have made. Okay, yeah. The only thing that I got to speak along that entire thing is, mm -hmm. where did I fuck up at? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's, it's, it's my issue. Mm -hmm. So if I, I lost a trade, I could have gained money on that trade, but what did I do wrong to not make money on, on a certain trade? So like, that was like, like my theory behind everything. That's why like, I felt like with my um, strategy and like my trading style, like, it was always back testing, back testing, back testing, back testing, 
over and over and over and over again until it came to the point that like I understand like what I'm looking for, how I'm looking for it, and, and I go from there. But it's not like like my trading style just came up overnight. It took me almost like seven years to develop my, my, my trading style after video after video after video after video after video after, video after 10,000 plus hours on the charts. Chart time is key. So at the end of the day, like I just took full, full advantage of just like trying to perfect my like my style enough to the point that I could teach others the, the um, same thing mm -hmm. or, or even close to that. How did you overcome like those failures and push through those years of like, you know, hardship? I mean, trading's not easy and most people give up. Correct. I think it's more just um understand the end goal, bro. Like mm -hmm. no matter how long it, it's going to take, I understand like what it could make you, you know? Yeah. So at the same time, like I've had people around me that was having those 15K days, 20K days. Yeah. Like, so I had like one person back in 2015 that was doing that. So I feel like just seeing him and then being inspired by that, it made me just um, be confident enough, like no matter what I go through, ups and downs, like it was still a brighter side at the end of the day. Like I tell people all the time, like trading has minimum downside mm -hmm. and all unlimited upside. You know, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like you, you, you might blow an account or two or three or four or five, yeah. but at the end of the day, the upside to trading is that you have a lifetime skill set that can make you money for the rest of your entire life, but also you can have generational knowledge to pass down to your kids and kids and kids and kids. So I feel like it's, it's a minimum downsides, unlimited upsides, and that's what kind of kept me to keep on pushing, regardless of like what happens. So wh when did you start seeing like the first, because it obviously it wasn't like shit right at the gate making a bunch of money. Like oh, you grew up, no, you grew into that. No, but I, I feel like with me personally, bro, like um, not to even like, you know, to my, to my, my, my own horn any kind of way, but I'm very good at patterns. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very good at patterns. I'm, I'm good at, at spotting certain patterns in anything in life. Mm -hmm. So like when it came to the charts, I feel like, it just came very, very quickly. Like I had my first thousand on a day, like my like my fourth month of trading. I was walking out of sociology class and I look at, at my phone and, and that trade was up in profit a thousand dollars. Walking out of college class and I'm like, you know what? I'm going all in. <laughs> F that, I'm going all in. So um just seeing that, but also like even like the earlier times, me staying up while my girlfriend's inside a room and everything else, babe, come to bed. Nope, I'm London session. <laughs> so I'm making a couple hundred dollars here, a couple hundred dollars here, a couple hundred dollars here. Yeah. But at any day, like it was enough to make me interested in wanting to keep on going. Mm -hmm. You know. So anyone just listening, you know, someone has 500 bucks. How would you recommend they get started? Invest in education. Yeah. <laughs> Invest in education with, with that 500 dollars. I wouldn't even say dabble inside of markets as of yet because remember, it's kind of like it's like taking a test with no kind of study content yeah you're gonna fail the test so like why not invest into a tutor to pass that that test mm -hmm. when it comes down to it trading same concept investing in education that can pretty much get you to the point that you, you have a foundation so you can now like not go through all those rough patches that you would have if you didn't invest in, in, in education and people at times can be very very egotistical about learning from from other people yeah it's education we went to school for 12 years college plus four years at times. It's yeah. so like, why not invest into, into a professor that has already been through everything that you plan on going through? Did you have yeah. a mentor or someone you attribute like a lot of your success so, to? So a mentor, no. Um, all I can remember, bro, is that I had only one friend that I should have talked to every now and again and asked him like, I remember like when I started doing five lots on UJ at the time, I was like, yo, bro, like this is like my result on five lots. Um, do you think I'm ready? Or do you think I'm getting greedy? Mm -hmm. And then he'll tell me like some advice. And like, that's as, as far as mentor that I've ever, 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 ever had. I've never had a person to sit me down and like, yo, do this, do this, do this. I've never had that. So at the end of the day, like, I feel like I just took full pride in just, you know, try to learn as much as, as I can by myself. But along my journey, I met people that pretty much was good at other concepts and trading. Mm -hmm. And then I got some little insights and little tips that pretty much helped me to where I am. Yeah, yeah. Today, you know, I'm really curious. Talk more about like dropping out of college because you said you're walking out of the psychology class. You look at your phone, you're up a thousand dollars. So and you like, was it really that simple? If you were just like, I wouldn't, right, I'm out. I wouldn't say that I dropped out. No, no, no. I'm big. I'm big on on education. I did not drop out. I was going to school for nursing. Oh wow! Complete opposite. Totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Complete opposite because I'm I'm very very into the body, very very big on anatomy and that kind of yeah. thing. So I, I was going to school for nursing, and um at the end of the day, like I, I did all my pre prereqs and that kind of stuff. But when it came down to it, like I didn't get into the program. So that's when I was like, yo, F this, I'm gonna focus on what I've been yeah. focusing on and go full fledged with that because I wasted all this time striving for something that I didn't even get into. Come on. Yeah. I felt some kind of way. And I wasn't a bad student. I, I got, you know, a couple of days here and there, but more, I was more like a BNC student. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was, I was, but it wasn't good enough for that program. So like after not getting into that program, that's when I, I went full fledged on my classes, my trading, just focus on that, on that full time at that point. Okay. Yeah. So you so you did finish college. Huh? So you did finish college. I didn't. 
I didn't. I didn't get my AA. So you got, so you got all your free reps. You were like ready, and you were just at that point. And I registered for the program, but then I didn't get in. Oh. So, but the, I I finished the pre-reqs, but it wasn't enough to get my AA. Okay. It was I just see. enough to get into the program itself. Yeah. So, you don't think obviously college is necessary for learning how to trade? Anyone can learn how to trade. So, a person can go to college, but at the end of the day, like you're spending four, five years, six years in college to now make fifty thousand dollars or seventy thousand dollars. When you can even put that same amount of time into studying something that can actually benefit you for the rest of your entire life. Yeah. Because at one point, I was about to even join the military. Oh, really? Um, but then you have the, the, the four-year contracts. So then I was like, yo, if I go to the military for four years and I stay outside for four years, can I accomplish more outside than I would inside? Mm -hmm. Then I just did just that. I had friends going to the military, but I was like, you know what? Let me just focus on myself, put like my full effort and full time into like what I'm doing. And those four years, you know, I got far enough to pretty much, you know, make a sustaining living off trading itself. Wow. I just want to take a second to thank this episode's sponsor, thedailytraders.com. Now, if you're interested in learning how to trade in the stock market, I just opened enrollment for my mentorship group where I'm giving you access to see my exact trades in the stock market. So I'll post my entries and I'll post my exits. I'm either making or losing money with full transparency. Enrollment is now open. So if you click the first link in the description below, hit the apply now button, fill out that short application. And if qualified, someone from my team will be reaching out. All right. We hope you guys are enjoying this episode. Let's continue. Yeah. You want to tell us a bit about your trading style and strategies? Yeah. So like I, I'm mainly based on technical analysis, like about 90% technical analysis. Yeah. Um, I, I go very, very big on confluence trading, so which means that I, I look for multiple confirmations inside a market. Mm -hmm. I use all time frames for some kind of reason in some kind of way. I, I trade off certain time frames as far as like my overall direction of bias, mm -hmm. but um, like entries based on a certain time frame as well. Um, I focus more on one to three type of ratios for my entries and, and exits and my risk to, to rewards. Um, and yeah, man, like um, I'm, I'm not a, a scalper, intraday trader or a swing trader. I, I'm, I consider myself very, very dynamic. Okay. Because my entries are based on a scalping type of style, which means that I see a minimum drawdown at times in certain entries. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I, I try to focus on more maintaining the trade as long as possible. So once I can maintain the trade as long as possible, that's when it gets into like a swing trading type of, of, of area. Okay. So if I maintain the trade for, let's say, 20, 30 pips, and after that, I, I get up into like the 60 pip range, 70 mm -hmm. pip range. Technically, that's a swing type trade. Yeah. So now it's based off of my, my rewards are not based on the H4 time frame or even the H1 time frame. So like I'm I'm slowly scaling like my, my trades up to a scalping scalping type of trade setup, all the way until the point that I'm focusing on the TPs off of the H1 or H4 time time frames instead. Wow. So like I try to maintain as long as possible until I get to the point that I can now focus on the higher time frame TPs. That's hard. I think you know most people I think think that you need to either focus on swing or day, and nah. they kind of put those defined areas of just do this, just do okay, this sorry. when it's like. You can be diverse. You can figure out what works for you. Yeah, because I've noticed that, look, people that swing trade, they're terrible at entries. People that scalp, they're terrible at holding trades. You know, so like mm -hmm. scalpers get in quick and out quick. Swing traders, they get in terribly and just get out eventually. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and intraday traders, like kind of like in that, 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 that fine medium. But at, at the end of the day, like a swing trader, I mean, an intraday trader is still kind of weak on certain points as well. Yeah. So the fact that a person can actually focus a little bit on intraday trading, for nice entries like scalpers, scalpers have great fucking entries. They have great entries as to why they use big lots for what they do to actually make a good amount of profit because they're not in for a long time. Yeah. So, so they have to use bigger lot sizes. Mm -hmm. And um, a swing trader doesn't really use big lot sizes, so they, they, they use a smaller lot size that's open to a lot of drawdown for at times days and weeks and months at times yeah. just to get a little bit of profit or even stay into that, that one trade for months and months at a time and not really see the kind of profit that you could have seen if you actually just focus on a bit more detail and get into a get into the trade a lot better and being able to maintain the trade a lot better to actually maximize that one trade. Okay. Do you think you've learned more like as a trader from your biggest win or your biggest loss? My biggest losses because like I said, like every single time that I've had a loss, I have to back test and critique something within my trading style that I missed out on. Because mm -hmm. if I have a, a big loss, like I'm like, yo, like, where did I fuck up along that analysis? Mm -hmm. What could I have done along that analysis? Could I have drawn a trend line like this versus like, like this? Like, yeah. what could ha have been different along that entire like analysis to actually yeah. even help out that certain trade? Well, if you're comfortable sharing, what was your biggest day when? And my biggest, biggest day is on four hundred four hundred fifty thousand dollars, and that's when I had bought my Ferrari Pista with that one trade. Wow. Yeah. 
It was a, a 10 lot on US 30. So how do you feel about like rewarding yourself, you know, based off your trading, based off consistency? You have to reward yourself. At the end of the day, like, why are we working? Like, why are yeah. we on the charts every single day? Like, why are we even like striving to even like get better at the skill if we're not buying shit that, that, that we're into? Like, why even get, get better at the skill if we're not taking the trips that, that, we, that we always wanted to? Mm -hmm. So I feel like you have to reward yourself to actually make it seem and, and know that you're working for a reason and you're pretty much like reaping the rewards of working so fucking hard to gain the skill set because at the end of the day, like, it's not an easy skill to learn. But once you learn it, it's very rewarding. So yeah, yeah. I feel like just you have to buy things. Like the, the, the first thing that I ever bought with like my trading profits was a laptop, a MacBook. I went from a Windows to a MacBook. That, that was a big transition. Yeah. <laughs> so when I did that, that transition, I felt like it was needed because that was me saying like, yo, listen, like this skill set made me buy this laptop. Yeah. So now I'm going to re reward myself to even like get better tools. Like it's like mm -hmm. a chef and, a, and a, a knife set. Same concept. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I have to get my tools better. Wow. So what's a good balance? Because I think some people, you know, oh my gosh, they let's say they have ten thousand dollars, they make two thousand, and then they go below that two thousand, there goes their profits yeah. and then their ability to build the account and scale and eventually turn that ten thousand into a substantial amount of money. What is for you and also is it for the same for everyone, like a good balance between actually rewarding yourself and then growing? I feel like this, bro. At the end of the day, like um you can't have a premature reward. You can't start to make a little bit of money now. All of a sudden, you're you're buying clothes, you're buying this, you're buying this, you're buying this, you're buying this. You're you're, you're using up all your capital. Build the foundation first. Build your bank account first. Withdraw as much as possible. Build that bank account that that it comes to the point that you could take yourself shopping and not feel as if like you're hurting yourself in any kind of way. So it it takes time to actually build up that cushion. But um, I wouldn't actually um advise a person to just like, like right when they get their first big withdrawal and that kind of stuff, like start to spend it immediately. Like take your time. Build that that bank account first, build that cushion first. And eventually you'll come to a point that you can start buying things and not feel it in any kind of way. So like reward yourself eventually, but build your foundation primarily. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any like daily habits or rituals that you do that you kind of attribute to, you know, becoming a millionaire as a um, trader? Every single day is different in, in some kind of way, bro. And, yeah. I, and I embrace that. Mm -hmm. um, every, single tw every single 24 hours is different for me. And I wake up to a different task to do every single day, but I make sure enough I, I'm on a laptop at least, or on my, on my desktop at least three, four hours a day to yeah. check out the charts, check out Wall Street Academy, check out like like my entire like um, community that I'm building for myself and like my team, mm -hmm. and I I make sure that I do that at minimum. Mm -hmm. So besides that, I feel like it's like I'm very very freestyle day to day, mm -hmm. but um I don't try to ever put my, put myself into a box that I have to do the same thing each and every single day because it gets kind of boring to me, and I hate when things get boring. Yeah. Do you feel like you've grown as a trader through just educating people and teaching? Yes, but then it, it limited me over time. So at, at one point, um, like when I was teaching, like like my biggest day was like around um, a 20K trade or a, 50, a 50K trade, a 70K trade, that kind of thing, right? But then when I stopped teaching, because the issue with, with, with teaching for me was this, I would build myself up when I'm not teaching and then tear myself down all over again to teach all over again, every single time. Because I was teaching like at times, two classes a month, three classes in March, back to back to back to back to back, building myself up, tearing myself down, build my, over and over and over again, to the point that it came to, um, I gotta just keep on building myself. So that's when I retired from teaching in person, and then from that point, then I started having like my big, my bigger days, 200K trades, 400, 400K trades, after I stopped teaching, because at that point, I don't have to sit down and tear myself down just to teach another person. Yeah. Now I'm only building myself up over time now, not tear, my, 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 tear myself down to build up somebody else. Interesting. Yeah, so but, I, but I put in my time for the community though. Yeah. I, I've, I've taught multiple classes, I've taught multiple students all around the entire world. I put in my, my time and effort yeah. to the, the um, niche itself. That's cool. Yeah. So, so Mark and I, we're not just traders, we're also entrepreneurs. We have yeah. our own separate Dope. things okay. going on. Yeah. And one thing that like I think is super cool is like you've really transitioned. You've taken the training capital and you've moved it into other ventures. Have so to, I kind of want to like dedicate the last little bit of this podcast and talk about some business stuff, maybe some more mindset and like some you know growing as a person and like breaking outside of trading because yeah. trading. And one of my mentors told me this: is trading isn't a high level. Trading by itself, it's not a high leverage task. You, if you're not showing up, you're not making money. So I, I was just talking about this as well. So I was like saying, um, whenever I'm on the charts, I'm stressed out. That's what it is. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm putting myself in a stressful situation. Yeah. And, I, and I'm aware of that, which means that if I'm trading every single day, that, that means that I'm doing what? I'm putting myself in a stressful situation every single day. Yeah. So it comes to a point that you have to pretty much kind of like step back 
and like venture off into other fields. Still trade like when you need to, which means that like you're open with putting yourself in that stressful situation, but not every single day though. At that point, it gets kind of stressful. Like it, yeah. it gets like overwhelming at that point. Not healthy. So um, venturing off into other fields, like we have top tier trader. I have like my compound that I'm building. I have other um, ventures like like my car, car collection that I'm building. Like all those things, I feel like if like it kind of soothes me a little bit because I'm not focusing on just making the money. I'm making the money, but also enjoying the money, but also reinvesting the money in some kind of way as well. Yeah, I was gonna ask like, what are your long term goals? Not just trading wise, but I'd like to hear that. But you know. It, do you see yourself like ever not trading or is this something you're going to do for the rest of your life? Rest of my life, bro. Rest of your life. I'm not breaking any kind of bones trading. Yeah. I'm good, you yeah. know? <laughs> so I feel as if like the fact that it's not like a, a hard labor task, mm -hmm. why not? You love it and you're passionate about it? Bro, if I wasn't passionate about it, then I, I wouldn't be here till this day. So you think, Pretty this way. Are, what are like three personality traits that pair well with becoming like consistently profitable as a trader? Taking accountability. T taking accountability. Um... Dropping the ego, yeah. but also being a leader as well. Being a that's leader. probably like, yeah. Why so, being a leader? That's, that's interesting because you say that because like training is such an individual, you know, task, job, sport, or however you want to put it, hustle. But how, like, how are you like, being a leader in trading when it's such an individual type of because hustle? I, I feel as if like if if you learn the task or the um, skill set of trading, it's like also your response responsibility as well to help educate other people as well. Oh, okay. Even like family in any kind of way, like be the, the first person in your family to pretty much introduce trading. Yeah. Be, be the first person the first person in your circle of friends to introduce trading. Because at the end of the day, like somebody got to do it. And somebody has to actually better the benefit of like, you know, humanity in, in some kind of way as well. So yeah. I feel as if like being the first person and taking that, that leadership role into, um, you know, taking that time to learn a skill set, I feel as if like you're also responsible enough to also help the other generation become, you know, knowledgeable of that skill set as well yeah so like being a leader in that aspect as well okay okay what's yeah. a long-term trading goal oh uh, make as much money as i can bro right. <laughs> you know what i'm saying I love it. no but um just more um you know just maintaining because i don't feel as if like i have to hit a home run every single trade anymore i can maintain off um just even i don't go off percentage but at the same time like if i'm trading a hundred thousand dollar account i can make 5k a day 10k a day and i'm perfectly fine I don't have to even do too, a, too much. That's aggressive. If you have a hundred thousand no. dollars, you think you can make five k a day off of that? I definitely could, and I've done it. I've, I've gone zero like twenty five and twenty five trades wins, all wins, big trades, four hundred wow. four and seventy thousand dollars in one in one in one week, multiple times. So wow. I know what I'm capable of. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I know what I, what, what I've done inside the market, and, and I know what I'm capable of. So I feel as if like that kind of capital is not really anything like shocking to me because I've done it multiple times over the past nine years. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't have to hit a home run, hit those six-figure trades and that kind of stuff. It's not really needed. That's where the stress comes in. Yeah. So the fact that um it's not really needed, like I can maintain off of just a lower amount and still be great. Okay. Because it still adds up over time. So, you know, you clearly you have the confidence to say I can take hundred thousand dollars and make a certain like a small percentage every single day. How did you build up that confidence? So because it's you know, it's it's one thing to be confident, but it's also knowing you, your ability. You know what I'm saying? It's two different things. False confidence goes nowhere. The fact that um, I'm saying like what I could do is because I've done it. I'm not confident about anything that I haven't done. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, so, so the fact that... Um, so how do you get there? I feel as if like, yo, like, I'm not going to say that you got to be born with it, bro, but you got, it got to be in you. Yeah. You have to be a person that pretty much is confident about any, any single thing that they're doing. Like, I think I put in enough chart time, enough, e enough hours, enough... Um, networking events like enough losses enough wins to say that like yo listen like i understand what i'm doing enough to keep on going and have that confidence yeah what about someone maybe someone listening is just scared to enter a trade like how do you overcome that a person is, is scared to enter a trade because they're, they're probably not confident about their education mm -hmm. they're probably not um confident about you know their knowledge in that certain skill set yet once a person is knowledgeable about a certain skill set then why be scared like the mama mentality like what kobe has he took a a thousand three-pointers a game is now just practice yeah why be scared about something that I, i'm doing every single day day in and day out it's just a part of the, the process then it's sure. part of the process right, yeah. any last kind of motivational tips or advice um like i always say believe you're the best before anybody else does yeah i like that That's, say, say that one more time believe you're the best before anybody else does oh, yeah. or believe you're great before anybody else which means that you got to have um the confidence that you're going to be where you want to be based off of your confidence. You know what I'm saying? Like before I am where I am today, 
I was confident enough that I'm going to get there eventually. I'm not too sure when I'm going to get there, but eventually, based on like my efforts and, and skills and just like my work ethic overall, like I'll get there eventually. I'm not going to say when, but eventually I'll get I'll get there. So those, be, believe you're great before anybody else does because at the end of the day, like once you're great, everybody else is going to start blocking behind you. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> that's sure. it right there. All right, Q. Thank you so definitely, much. Definitely, definitely appreciate you. Appreciate you coming definitely, on. Definitely as well. Thank you as well. Where can appreciate our audience you. find you, Q? Um, mainly um, on on Instagram and Twitter, Q Bank, C U E B A N K S, and yeah, right, only sweet. account. <laughs> All right, we hope you Thanks. guys enjoyed this episode. See you in the peace next out, one. Peace out. Peace out. Peace. Definitely. All right, Q. Appreciate you. Seriously.